Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red Omega for episode 10 of the playthrough. We are now in double digits, though I regret to inform you guys that this episode is going to be a bit different than normal, and allow me to explain. So, I already tried recording this episode, but I had to cut that recording and start over because I ran into what I thought was a glitch with the game, but it turns out it's just a discrepancy between Fire Red Omega and the actual Fire Red, and so allow me to kind of give you guys the rundown of what happened here. So, Today, I'm trying to get the HM Flash, which for those who don't know is a hidden move that's actually a very bad move, but you need it to be able to advance in the game because there's going to be an area we have to go through, which is going to be called Rock Tunnel, which can be found right here. And the only way to get through there, really, you can get through it without Flash, but you need Flash to light up the cave and make it easy to get all the way through, right? And so to get Flash, we have to go all the way back across the world over into this area and have 10 Pokemon. And if you look at my team, you would think I have 10 Pokemon, right? Because looking at it here, we have Geodude, then Graveler, Elekid, then Electabuzz, Staryu, then Starmie, Cyndaquil, then Quilava, Chikorita, Squirtle, and then all the Pokemon in my PC, you would think that I had 10 Pokemon. But it turns out you have to have 10 Kanto region Pokemon for it to actually register for the professor to actually give you Flash, which I thought was very confusing and it just messed up the entire episode. So I thought, you know what? Let's re-record it. Let's just start back over with the episode. That was only like, I don't know, 10 15 minutes in or something like that so it's okay so i knew the awakening was right here i already knew that in advance because i found that previously but here is going to be beautiful diglett's cave and i've got a question for you guys is there anywhere online where i can look this up is Diglett's Cave actually the right scale? Because going back to the town map here, Diglett's Cave is right here, right, right where our character is. And this cave takes us all the way over to roughly here, right here in this area, right? And that's quite a long way. Like, if you actually count the pixels, like, is it... Is Diglett's Cave actually that big enough or to take us all the way back over here or not? I wonder if it really is. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's been able to measure it somehow. You just kind of measure the squares. You can tell whether or not it'll take us all the way over there. But I've always wondered that. So, I don't know. Leave that down there in the comments if you guys have the answer to that question. Because I'd be very interested to see if Diglett's Cave is as big as it should be. Well, this isn't a surprise. Diglett dug this... Wait. Well, isn't this a surprise? I completely messed that up. Diglett dug this long tunnel. It goes to Viridian City, they tell me. I mean, that's very convenient, I suppose. I mean, especially considering I'd have to go all the way back to Cerulean City, make my way back into Mount Moon, which is impossible, go all the way back through there, and then... <laughs> Go through Pewter City. That's a long hassle to get back to Viridian. I'm very happy that Diglett just happened to dig this cave here. And Oh, we actually found one! Okay, so... When I, when I ran through this earlier, and it was... Oh, we have a Graveler here. I need to swap that out. What was so weird about Diglett's cave is I found a bunch of Dunsparce instead of Diglett here. Which is so freaking weird. Let's put uh, let's put Starmie up here as my uh, as my starting guy because Starmie is good against all the Diglett here, and also Starmie could use a couple levels to catch up with Electabuzz and Graveler. We need to level up Kalava as well, but uh, Kalava is not exactly going to be good against all these Rock slash Ground types, so let's avoid that for the time being. But as you guys can see here, Diglett's Cave is actually relatively big. I mean, we're pretty far in so far, and we're not even close to all the way through here. Let's go ahead and actually take on this battle. I've always wondered like what the inspiration for Diglett was as a Pokemon. It's I mean it's supposed to be a mole. I get that much, right? I mean obviously it's a mole. But then you look at his evolution, Doug Trio, and apologies, I'm going to have to enunciate Doug Trio that way this entire episode because there's Doug Trio. There's freaking Dunsparce. There's Doug Trio, the evolution of Diglett, and then there is Dodrio, which is the evolution of Doduo. So Doug Trio, Dodrio. I, I, they sound way... I hate that, that. That is such a tongue twister for me. I'm going to mess it up so many times throughout the entirety of this episode and probably the entirety of this playthrough. <laughs> Don't you use yawn on me, man. That's not cool. I mean, I did find that awakening earlier, so I guess that's somewhat helpful. Come on. We need a crit. We need a crit. Ah, uh, now, now we're actually going to fall asleep. I think yawn only takes one turn, right? Yep, there it is. There it is. Do I even use the Awakening? Yeah, let's just use it. Screw it. I mean, what's the point of having the Awakening if you're not even going to use it, right? I mean, it's annoying because it delays in a turn. It delays one turn, but whatever. We'll just deal with it, I suppose. Here comes the rollout. Wow. Okay. I mean, rollout does ramp up in damage, I think, as it, as it goes on, so... Uh, I, was, I, was, I was worried that he was going to hit me first there, because it actually would have hurt quite a bit. He might have actually taken me out. 
So I should uh, address uh, the fact that we didn't have an episode in the past couple of days. Apologies for that. You guys know that um, Near Cinema is my main focus most of the time. And the Black Ops 4 reveal <laughs> was yesterday. And yeah, I've been quite busy with that and house stuff. So <laughs> it was a pretty cool reveal. What do you guys think of the reveal? I'd love to hear down there in the comments. And also... How many people watching this Let's Play like did not know that I have another channel <laughs> that where I post Call of Duty videos and stuff like that? Because it always it always just blows my mind that there are fans of Nero's Let's Plays that only watch Nero's Let's Plays. I think that's a really cool thing. But yeah, the Black Ops 4 reveal was uh, yesterday. It very mixed responses uh, from a lot of the community. I'm excited, but I'm also very I'm also very worried about the game as well because it's so much different than like a normal Call of Duty game. Like it's like Rainbow Six meets Overwatch meets CS:GO meets Call of Duty. It's it's really weird. But the more gameplay I watch, the more comfortable I'm getting with the idea, but still there are so many people in the community that are just up in arms about all the changes that Treyarch are making with the game. But I would like to say this. They apparently and take it with a pinch of salt because they say it's every year but apparently they're going to be really trying hard with the pc platform with black ops 4 and i tweeted to the new pc treyarch twitter that they just came out with i'm like hey i would love mod tools for black ops 4 and then they replied we hear you i'm like oh all right then that's it that's actually pretty great because you guys know how marketing works i mean rarely why would they reply to something like that if they did not have the intention of trying to add mod tools for Black Ops 4. So if mod tools do come, they have not advertised it whatsoever, but if mod tools do come to Black Ops 4, that means Black Ops 4 custom zombies here on the channel. And that reminds me, I should do some more Black Ops 3 custom zombies. It's been a while. I just haven't been like in a real zombies mood, you know? I've been in a Pokemon mood, which is why we started up this playthrough. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Black Ops 4. Let's hear what you guys think down there in the comments. But uh, maybe, just maybe, we are going to be getting some uh, mod tools, which would be pretty cool. But even if there aren't any mod tools at launch for Black Ops 4, there are going to be three zombies maps at launch, which would be pretty fun as well. And maybe we'll do some uh, zombie playthroughs and zombie live streams here on the channel. That'd be fun. I've been meaning to stream more, but just, man, not enough time in the day. Like, it seems like when I'm done with all my videos from near cinema and then I start, like, doing episodes of this, it's like, there's just not enough time <laughs> to do that and also, like, be a sane human being that, like, leaves the house and, like, I don't know, gets enough sleep and actually eats and gets a little exercise. <laughs> like, it's just rough running two channels at times. But, yeah, I, I want to stream again. I, I keep saying it. And I hate saying it because there are so many people that uh, want this to happen, but I keep freaking delaying it. And one day I just need to sit down and freaking do it. Um... The Borderlands the pre-sequel YOLO challenge. I'm excited to do that. We're gonna be playing through as uh her name's not Misha, it's Nisha. And um yeah, going through uh doing a one life challenge uh in, in the pre-sequel, which should be fun. I've only beaten the pre-sequel technically twice. I beat it on normal once and then I beat it on uh true ball hunter mode both times as claptrap playing through with my friend nick i've never played solo i've never played with the character that has to deal with the entire oxygen element i barely remember anything about the game it's been so long it's been years since i touched it so uh i thought it'd be fun we'll do that sometime soon tm that should just be i should just rebrand my channel names as soon with a trademark <laughs> right after it all these freaking Dunsparce. Apparently, we're in Dunsparce Cave, which I guess makes sense, like, lore-wise. I mean, the Diglett and the Doug Trio uh, went through, and they dug out the entire cave, right? That makes sense. And uh, naturally, Pokemon are going to start living in the cave. But it looks like it's only Dunsparce, <laughs> which are actually quite annoying for poor Starmie here. There you go. So I'm trying to think. We have Staryu and Starmie. Elect a Buzz, which I'm not sure if, if, if Elekid counts as a Kanto region Pokemon. I'm not so sure on that. Then we have Geodude and Graveler. So we have either, we have depending on how they count it, we have either five or six Kanto region Pokemon. Which means once we get on the other end, wait a minute, what am I doing? This whole time, like, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here thinking, like, okay, so once we go over there, we need to go back to Route 1, we'll catch ourselves some Pidgeys and Rattas and stuff like that. But while we're in here, let's catch a Diglett. That's a Kanto Pokemon. <laughs> I'm actually surprised we didn't find a Doug Trio this entire time, but only Diglett. All right. Uh, can I weaken you? Maybe Water Gun won't knock him out. It might still. We may have to keep searching until we find a slightly. Yeah, we're going to find a slightly stronger Diglett. <laughs> I should probably use Recover one of these times too. But come on. We need like a level 20, 23 or higher. It'd be helpful. All right, 21. Let's see. 
Maybe this one will be a little bit stronger. Let's try uh, Water Gun. Tackle. Tackle won't do anything. It's not even worth using. Ah. I mean, we're getting experience out of this, but I'm not trying to knock out all these Diglett. I'm trying to only weaken them so I can capture them easier. But then again, I do have Great Balls. Let's see. Come on. There we go. A 28. I shouldn't be able to one-hit this, right? I mean, it's two levels higher than me. And I'm using a Water Gun, which is not a good move. For crying out loud. <laughs> is it is it four times effective? Is I think it might be it actually. Is it four times effective effective on Diglett? It might be. Alright, so how can we do this? We can do it by This is taking way longer than it should. Uh we'll grab Kolava, who is a very bad type matchup for this. And there we go. Kolava should be able to help me out here. Now watch us get it done sparse. Ah, right, there we go. It's actually a diglet. And every time, man, every time, like, you know, it's so, like black and white as the Pokemon's so ready to appear. Every time I keep thinking, like, wait a minute, is that going to be a shiny? And then it's never a shiny. But remember, although I'm, don't knock him out. Although I'm undecided as to what my final two Pokemon are going to be for this playthrough, there's always the wild card of a shiny. Any shiny, I don't care who it is, it can be a shiny. Uh, I'm trying to think here. It could be another Geodude. It, it, we'll, have, we'll have two golems. One shiny, one non-shiny. It doesn't matter what Pokemon it is. If we find a shiny, that will be a member of my party. No matter what, guaranteed 100%. Assuming, of course, I'll accidentally knock it out or something like that. But I, I would be so careful. I would be sure not to knock out a shiny Pokemon. But the chances are like one in like four or five thousand or something like that. If you finding a shiny. So it doesn't seem like um, we're actually going to find one. But you never know. You never know. All right. So we got Diglett. Let's see here. It burrows to the ground at a shallow depth. It leaves raised earth in its wake, making it easy to spot. I mean, it is a little mole. I mean, look, it just pops its head up. All right. So I guess the only other Pokemon we can find here would be a Doug Trio, though we never actually saw one. So I guess we're going to head out of here. I went inside Rock Tunnel, but it's pitch black and scary in there. If I could get a Pokemon to use Flash and light it up. The foreshadowing, ladies and gentlemen, the foreshadowing. Oh, let me break your guys' hearts, by the way. Let me just break th those hearts. There's no item back here. I could have swore there was an item. Is there an, Maybe there's an invisible item? Probably not, though. I could have swore, like, in my memory, there's an item or something that is supposed to be back here. But there's nothing. Makes no sense. But uh, let's head down here. And by the way, if you guys can't tell, we are... If we head up this way... Wait. Wait a minute. Yeah, if we have this, right up here is Pewter City. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to cut this down, actually. Are we right outside Pewter City? I think we actually might be. No. We are! That's so weird. And I'll tell you guys why it's so weird. How'd that tree grow back so quick? Well, actually, while we're here, we can, cut, we can uh, catch some Pokemon. But what's so weird is right here is how we go into Viridian Forest, right? But if you cut down this tree... And then you head down this way. We we basically bypass Viridian Fort. Like, right there. Like, you see? Oh, oh, wow. Okay. So, there's the building. And, wow. That's interesting. So, instead of, like, showing what the actual Viridian Forest looks like, from this perspective, you just see all the trees and stuff. That's neat. That's why I was so confused. I'm like, wait a minute. We didn't go through Viridian Forest. So, are we actually just outside Pewter City? But we are. That's kind of neat. All right, you, my friend, are not a Kanto Pokemon. We need to catch a few more Kanto Pokemans. Ah, there's no point in even knocking them out. I'm like, I'm really close on leveling here, but there's no point. That's just bullying. It's like knocking out a Pokemon for, like, five experience. All right, Pidgey. That'll do. We could use a Pidgey. Although, this one's level six. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a jerk and be hard to catch. Let's find out. Come on. Come on. Uh, of course. Of course. Couldn't just go easily, could you? You have to fight your way through, don't you? What if I were to try again? All right. <laughs> I don't have any Pokemon. Well, I, could go, I can go to a PC, I suppose. But I don't have any Pokemon that can actually, like, fight these guys. I could put out Elekid. Or, I'm sorry, Electabuzz. <laughs> oh, I called him Elekid. Uh, I, could, I could put out Electabuzz, and then when they attack him, it could... Uh, Paralyze him with static. That could work. This Pidgey just does not want to go. And level 15 Chikorita would not... Even, even though it's only level 15, Chikorita would knock out all these Pokemon. 
All right, Pidgey, my boy. I'm going to need you to, like, uh, let's try a Pokeball. You know, instead of the Great Ball, let's go Pokeball. Let's just switch it up on him. He won't see it coming. He's a Pidgey. Why did that work? Busts out of all those Great Balls, but just stays there in the Pokeball. Which, for those who don't know, a Great Ball is the same as a Pokeball, but it has, like, a higher chance of catching. Does not like to fight. Well, apparently that one did. It hides in tall grass and so on, foraging for food such as small bugs. And for those that aren't uh, aware of how Pokemon... Okay, I know there are some people that watch uh, the, this playthrough and never played through a Pokemon game before. You can only have six Pokemon in your party at one time. So whenever you catch a Pokemon after the six you already have with you, those Pokemon get automatically transferred to your PC. So that's where all the Pokemon are going. If you're wondering like why the uh, overlay and anything like that hasn't been updated throughout the entirety of this episode, it's because no Pokemon are actually entering my team here. They're all going to the PC right now. We don't need a century. That's generation two, my friend. Sorry to say. We ain't got no room for no gen tours. All right, that's another Pidgey. I'm starting to think we only have Pidgeys and Centrits here in this grass. I can feel it. It's going to be something new. All right, well, it was something new, but that's, that's, uh, that's, that's not a Pokemon we need. That is not... Well, actually, you know what? Why not? Let's head down this way. Let's head into Viridian Forest and uh, like get some like Caterpie and Weedles and stuff like that. I would be, I'm just saying I would be so happy if we found a shiny Caterpie that could turn into a shiny Butterfree. Oh, that'd be so cool. I would love that. You guys have no idea how much I'd love that. All right, Oddish, that'll work. That's Gen 1. All right, Oddish, my dude. I'm going to need you to just stay inside this Pokeball and not break out and just save us all a lot of time all right see all is good people that's a good oddish <laughs> let's see its scientific name is Audium wanderous at night it is said to walk nearly 1000 feet on its two roots its feet are roots those aren't feet a thousand feet is not as far as you think it is by the way it sounds like a big number but it really isn't <laughs> Like a thousand feet's nothing. What else do we have here? Caterpie and Weedle. Come on. All right. Or Pidgey. Apparently, there's just gonna be Pidgeys everywhere. This world's infested with Pidgey. Come on. Caterpie. <gasps> Caterpie. You're adorable. All right, Caterpie. If you could just stay inside this Pokeball. How many have I caught so far? There is the. The Pidgey, the Oddish, the Caterpie. I'm trying to remember. I, I think I need to catch one more Pokemon after Caterpie. Just to be on the safe side. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see what Caterpie's Pokedex entry says. I love how your Pokedex, like, here's, here's what doesn't make sense to me about Pokedex, right? You only get complete details on a Pokemon after you catch them. So, and the Pokedex, it's not like the Pokedex has this information by default, so I never thought about this until right now, is what's being written in the Pokedex right now, like what's on our screen, is that what our character wrote in as a way of describing the Pokemon? Because I never realized that before. I know some people are face palming right now, but wow, this is all just hitting me at once. For some reason, I always thought the... Poke I think it's because of the anime, it's how it works in the anime. I always thought that the, that the Pokedex, once you captured a Pokemon, it would then give you the actual information about it. But no, I think we're actually the ones writing this stuff out. But it is covered with green skin. When it grows, it sheds the skin, covers itself in silk, and becomes a cocoon. Wow, that is uh, a bit of a revelation for me, honestly. I'm going to need a moment to absorb all that. It's us that's making... Hey, a Weedle! There we go. That's exactly what we needed. All right, Weedle, if you could just stay inside this great ball right away, that'd be awesome. We could be, uh, we'll be out of here, be out of your hair, and not have to come back to this forest for a good long time. If ever. The only reason, actually, the only reason we'd have to come back here is if I wanted to, like, uh, go hunting for, like, a shiny Weedle or something like that. All right. Often found in forests and grasslands, it has a sharp, toxic barb of around two inches on top of its head. Yeah, that's terrifying. A two-inch toxic barb on a one-foot-long bug. <laughs> terrifying. 
terrifying stuff. All right, so that should be 10 Pokemon. If not, I am very sad, but I think we'll be okay. It's really weird um, how, you know, the game is generations one through three, but uh, you still have to get 10 generation one Pokemon for it to actually count. Well, Kanto region Pokemon, which I think may or may, or may not count Delicate. I'm not sure. This building is not where we need to go, but I want to show it to you guys anyway, because it's kind of interesting. So you have this guy here, a fainted Pokemon, just has no energy left to battle. It can still use moves like Cut outside of battle. That's a good tip. And then this guy. I'm looking for the Pokemon Magnemite. Want to trade one for my Mr. Mime? If I had a Magnemite, I probably would. Mr. Mime would be an interesting Pokemon to have in this playthrough. I've never had a Mr. Mime before, but I don't like Mr. Mime. He's creepy and weird. <laughs> this is why we bring Chikorita, by the way. All these trees need to be cut. And then here we are in another building. This guy, every time I see him, I think it's Lieutenant Surge. Once a Pokemon learns Flash, you can get through Rock Tunnel. I mean, technically you can get through it without it, but you just can't see anything, <laughs> which is really frustrating. Uh, hi, remember me? I'm one of Professor Oak's aides. If your Pokedex has complete data on 10 species, I'm supposed to give you a reward. In, I want to call him he, but Professor Oak entrusted me with HM5 for you. So Nero, let me ask you, have you gathered data on at least 10 kinds of Pokemon? I, I think so. Great! You have caught and owned 11 kinds of Pokemon. Congratulations. Here you go. So I think Elekid did count then, in that case. So now we have HM5, which contains the hidden move Flash. It lightens up even the darkest of caves and dungeons, which is great. It's going to be helpful later on in the game. But it's a terrible move. Like a really, really, really bad move. Like right here. It doesn't do damage. Right? It, uh... Lowers the foe's accuracy. It's basically smokescreen that has a 70% accuracy itself. Like, it's pointless, right? It's a move that is pointless. You need to teach it to a Pokemon, though, which is frustrating. <gasps> Chikorita can learn it! I don't know how. What pos What on Chikorita's body is going to light up a cave, exactly? But, uh, I, I don't care. Whatever. We'll just drop a uh, synthesis. I'm not going to teach you any other moves, really. I hate the idea of an HM slave, but slowly but surely, Chikorita is turning into our HM slave. <laughs> that we're just going to always have in our party so it can use Cut and Flash for us. Uh, actually, is Cut really that bad of a move? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's really not good. No Pokemon that I'm going to have anyway is going to have the stab bonus. And it doesn't do a lot of damage to begin with. It's really not a good move. But now that we have that, we're pretty much uh, good to go. Oh, Pokeball. Now I want to show you guys one more thing that I found in the uh, the broken recording of this episode that I had to redo. I found it. I thought it was interesting. So, and oh, that's dead end. I like that they have little dead ends like this. So it's, I don't know, little, 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 little areas for you to explore. Even if there's nothing there, I like that they add areas you can go to that don't really serve a purpose. But uh, I found this, and I thought it was interesting. I don't have a use for it right now, but I'm definitely going to have to remember it, because this is going to be a really cool combo. So now we're back in Viridian City. You guys, remember, it's been a long time, but uh, here we are. Let's uh, open up the old uh, town map. Here we are in Viridian City. We've come all this way. We went all the way there, and then came down here, and then there we are. But uh, yeah, so all the way over here, now we have cut. Yeah, it, I like how the game encourages you to go back to places you've already been and cut down things to get to areas you couldn't go to previously. But um, this guy over here has a very good move and some interesting dialogue as well. Ugh, I must have dozed off in the sun. I, heard, I had this weird dream about a drowsy eating my dream, and I learned how to eat dreams. Ugh, this is too spooky. Let me teach it to a Pokemon so I can forget about it. It can only be learned once, so he's going to be giving us the TM for Dream Eater. And the only Pokemon that can learn it is Starmie, and that's because Starmie is half water, half psychic, and it's going to be a psychic move. But here's the thing. Absorbs half the damage it inflicted on a sleeping foe to restore its HP. So what this move will do is does 100 damage and will heal me for 50. And keep in mind it has stab bonus, therefore it does even more than 100 damage. Like, like a really high damage move that also heals me, but the opposing Pokemon has to be asleep for it to work. Thus the name Dream Eater, right? Starmie has no way of putting any Pokemon to sleep. <laughs> At least doesn't right now. I'm not sure if there's going to be another another TM I can learn later on, but I don't think there is. So, um, unfortunately, Dream Eater, while it's cool, 
I, I don't have a use for it. Unless I were to like get another Pokemon like Snorlax and have it use Yawn and then put them to sleep and then swap out for Starmie and then have Starmie use Dream Eater. It seems like a lot of work. And I, I'm not sure if I want to have uh, Snorlax be part of my team. So, uh, so we're not, so not going to learn the ability right now, but uh, we know it's here. If I get a Mr. Mime or I don't know, if I do decide to get an Alakazam, which... I shouldn't because I've gotten many, I've gotten Abras and Kadabras many times before. And I, I like getting Pokemon I haven't had before for these playthroughs, or at least Pokemon I haven't used a ton in for these playthroughs. And so I don't think I should get a, a, a Kadabra slash Alkazam, but maybe I will. Um, some people have suggested Gengar. Maybe. I don't know. I, I've had plenty of Haunters, never really any Gengar because uh, it, it's hard to have that. And what am I doing here? Why am I not? Why am I not using the old sprinty shoes? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm so undecided. You, you only have six Pokemon that you can have for your main team, and I'm the kind of person that doesn't swap out his Pokemon much. Like once I have my six, you know, those are my six. So um, I'm very, I'm very, very choosy. I let you guys, I let you guys have your say. Um, you guys really wanted me to take Cyndaquil, which of course evolved into Quilava, and I'm happy to have him here on the team, but I'm really undecided as to who my other two Pokemon are going to be. Don't be fooled by the overlay. We're not keeping Squirtle and Chikorita. They are just part of the team right now because, well, I haven't put uh, Squirtle back in the uh, in the PC yet, and we're keeping Chikorita with us right now because Chikorita knows all those other fancy moves that I like to use. Now, what we could have actually done is we could have went up um, through Pewter City and then went through Mount Moon again and then we have to go back to Cerulean City for those who don't know but instead uh, we're just going to run back this way I think it'd actually be faster to go back this way run through Vermilion then take the underground tunnel again back up to uh, Cerulean City I think that'd be faster and we'd run into a lot less Pokemon which is kind of the goal wow I was about to say we just went on a very long streak there where I didn't run into any Pokemon at all that was actually kind of cool so I think that would be a faster way to do things. Or Oh, you would have Arena Trap. He has an ability called Arena Trap that makes it so you can't run away from him, which is stupidly annoying. And he's going to dig. Who would have thought Diglett would dig? And this is probably going to knock out Quilava, actually. Almost. All right, time for another quick attack. All right. No more Diglett. Although, if we face another one that digs on us, we're definitely... Hey, level 26. We're definitely going to have to swap him out. Because I don't want Kalava to... Don't want him to faint. All right. Come on. Oh, I was hoping to get a long ways away. Not all Diglett have um, Arena Trap. It's it's his... It's not called his nature. Ah, I'm crying out loud. What's it called? We'll swap out here. Oh, real quick. Let's check him out. It's called... Uh, ability. Uh, like, Sarmi's ability is Illuminate. Um, there are like two or three different, I think only two, there are two different abilities. But you can't even switch with Arena Trap? Oh no! Well, it, it was nice knowing you, Quilava. Because he's undoubtedly gonna, oh, he's not gonna use Dig. Although Fury swipes, if he hits it, oh, oh, down he goes. Down he goes. Knocked out by a Diglett. No. And I love how when you knock, when he knocks out your Pokemon, he then is like, "All right, now you can leave." It's like, what, jerk? Did all that? Just had to knock him out. I should have uh, knocked out the Diglett just for retribution, but I didn't. I got hurry. Got to get to the Pokemon Center. Guy, guy, heal Quilava. Poor guy's all tuckered and knocked out. And actually, while we're here, since I don't really plan on coming back here for a while, let's go ahead and stop. Hmm. No, we'll continue on. It might be a slightly longer episode as a result, but you guys seem to really like the longer episode, so whatever. Um, we need, there's a couple buildings I need to stop in while we're here in Vermilion City, because we get things here. This guy should be the fisherman, right? Yeah. I'm the fishing guru's older brother. I simply love fishing. I can't bear to go without. Tell me, do you like to fish? Well, of course I do. Grand, I like your style. I think we can be friends. Take this and fish, young friend. And now we have a good rod, which is better than the old rod, which means we're going to get rarer rarer that's a weird word uh and possibly slightly better pokemon when we go fishing even though i don't fish a whole lot but whatever still good to have and there's also going to be wait a minute we might we, not, we may not actually have to go right now but we're gonna go anyway what's inside this house a little girl apparently hi do you have a tailo want to trade for my far-fetched 
I've heard things about Farfetch'd. Cypher was trying to talk me into having Farfetch'd uh, be part of my team here, because apparently, um, he's Farfetch'd is a pretty bad Pokemon within, like, the base games and stuff like that, but apparently here in Fire Red Omega, they made him much better than normal. Pokemon Fan Club, all Pokemon fans, welcome. This is where I wanted to stop really quick. Ah. If I already have a water type, I would definitely get a seal and turn it into a dugong. I've never had a dugong. I've always liked it. But the reason why I never had or never like really raised one is you usually get your water type pretty quickly, right? And you can only find seal and dugong, I think, in Seafoam Islands. And that's like from towards the end of the, like right before the end of the game, pretty much. And here's the Pikachu. Aw. Let's see what this guy has to say. Won't you admire my Pikachu's adorable tail? I mean, all Pikachu are adorable if you ask me. Oh dear, my seal is far more attractive by double, I would say. Compared to what, the Pikachu? I mean, they're completely different. That's apples and oranges is what that is. I chair the Pokemon fan club. I raise more I raise more than 100 Pokemon. I, th I thought it was going to be raised more, but he's apparently still raising all 100 right now. I'm very fussy when it comes to Pokemon. I surely am. So, did you come to hear about my Pokemon? <sighs> yes. Good, then listen up. My favorite Rapidash, it's cute, lovely, smart, plus amazing. You think so? Oh yes, it's stunning. Kindly, love it, hug it, when sleeping, warm and cuddly, spectacular, ravishing. Oops, look at the time, I kept you too long. Thanks for hearing me out, I want you to have this. I'm glad we stopped. I'm glad we stopped, because now we have a bike voucher. Take that bike voucher to the bike shop in Cerulean City. Exchange that for a bicycle, free of charge. Don't worry, my favorite Firo will fly me anywhere I need to go. So, I have no need for a bicycle. I hope you like cycling. That's why we stopped. We have a bike voucher, which now, once we go back to Cerulean City, we can grab ourselves a bike. And this person, our chairman, is very vocal about Pokemon. Yeah, you're not kidding. And we also have a sign right here. If someone... Wait, if someone brags, brag right back. My... Oh, wait, no, you didn't brag. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to be mean. I could have been up there and be like, my... I like the buzz, it's cuter, but that, look at that seal, it's adorable. Look at it. Done so much fun. <laughs> Although, shouldn't seals be in water? Just saying. Makes, makes sense if you ask me. Um, is there anywhere else I would need to go here? And now I'm forgetting, because I thought we also... Do we also learn fly here or not? I, I don't remember. We learn fly much later on in the game, so it doesn't really matter. I, I didn't go in this building. Let's stop really quick just to see what's in here. Ah! ah, It's a Pidgey! I like it when they're actually out and like running around and stuff like that. I want to exchange mail with all sorts of people. I send my Pidgey to a union room to exchange mail for me. Well, too bad union room's not a thing on ROMs. I get my Pidgey to fly a letter to Saffron in the north. Well, can you get him to drop off some water so I can actually just walk up to Saffron? That'd be fantastic. Alright. Well, I think that's uh, all the things to see here in Vermilion City. We can head this way, but there's really no sense because there's going to be a Snorlax blocking our path, if I recall correctly. There are some trainers to battle, but that's okay. We don't need to battle them right now. We can always come back, take them on at a later date. But yeah, we're... I would. There's three bits of grass here between me and there, and there's a Talo. <sighs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it, but part of me wants to... Yeah, we'll quick attack it. I'm going to try and capture it. Okay. So, if I don't get a crit, we can quick attack it again without knocking it out. Alright, perfect. We're going to catch the Talo. The Talo will sit in my PC, and maybe later on... I'll trade Talo for that Farfetch'd and maybe have the Farfetch be part of my team. But here's the thing, though. Like, if Farfetch'd is, like, super buffed up and, like, I don't know, borderline OP, I don't know if I'd want to have him be be part of the team. You know, it just seems like it'd be easy mode, you know? Uh, but Talo, it dislikes cold seasons, as most birds do. They migrate to other lanes in search of warmth, flying over 180 miles a day. Goodness. How does that compare to real-life birds? Is that on par or... More or less? I have no idea how far birds actually fly. But they do go south for the winter. That is the thing I know. Wait. Was this guy here before? Oh, this guy gave me Chikorita. Okay. Well, thank you for the Chikorita. Chikorita's been super helpful, actually. 
we're about to get ourselves a bicycle. I'm about to actually, I said I would do it after like the first episode, but I never did. We're actually gonna have to set up uh, like a hotkey or something to make it so I can easily get to my bike. Oh wait, I forgot we have Toto Dial still sitting there in the daycare. <laughs> That's hilarious. And now we can cut this down for easy access. And now we're back in beautiful Cerulean City. All right, my dude, I come for your $1 million bike. Oh, that's a bike voucher. Okay, here you go. And now I have a bike. I wish you could choose, like, your color and stuff like that, because, like, you know, I don't know why you want the blue and the, the blue and yellow one, but you have, like, the red and orange-looking one here which has a basket on it, which, you know, how convenient baskets are. But, uh, yeah, so I need to set it up. You can favorite it, but I'm not sure what the favorite button would be i think it'd be technically like select or something like that but i'm not sure how that would be set up here so yeah you can register it there you go i'm not sure what these oh real quick what is the select button so that is select okay i just quickly messed around with the options and stuff like that so backspace is select so that's actually very convenient i can just press that and now suddenly we're on a bicycle and also note the bicycle music I'm sorry, I, I just really like the bicycle music. I also like how fast we're moving around. This is actually going to... This is going to speed up a lot of the game, I think. Oh, no, I didn't mean to go in there. <laughs> this is going to speed up the game quite a bit. I'm actually pretty excited about that. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, now that we are back here in beautiful Cerulean City, it is time to bid you all adieu. Because next episode, we're going to be heading to the... That way. You see the path right there? We're heading that way. And then we're going to make our way through the rock tunnel and make our way down to Lavender Town. So, uh, very excited about that. And hopefully, I don't spend too much time in the rock tunnel. Because if I'm being entirely honest, I hate to be, uh, hate to be a spoil sport. But rock tunnel is probably my least favorite part of the Kanto region. <laughs> it's a big tunnel. It's confusing. There are Zubats everywhere. And, uh, yeah, you have to have Flash. Otherwise, you're completely blind. <laughs> so... Should be a lot of fun regardless. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the Pokemon Fire Red Omega playthrough. And if you did, please drop me a rating. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.